This video is focusing on vertex form and focusing on the transformations from the parent function of y equals x squared. And then we're also going to be converting function, uh, vertex form and we're also going to be writing the equations in vertex form. So this first question, we're given f of x equals x plus 3 squared minus 2. This is in vertex form because it's, it's a squared and then it also has that minus 2 at the end. So our vertex comes from our h and k. We want to find the four values, the a. There are two things we want from a. We want the positive and the actual value. So a is a positive, but a is also equal to a positive 1. So we put a as positive and then a is 1. The h value comes from the number inside the parentheses with your x. You change the sign, so right now it's a positive 3, so h is actually equal to a negative 3. And then the k comes from the value outside. We keep the sign on it. So it's a negative 2. So our vertex is from the h and k. Our vertex is at negative 3 comma negative 2. Our axis of symmetry comes from our vertex. It's still the x value of our vertex. So it's an x equals a negative 3. The domain is, as always, is a quadratic. It's open bracket, negative infinity to positive infinity, open bracket. And then our range, again, comes from the y value of our vertex. Now, since a is positive, it will open up. That means that we're going to have a positive infinity. And then the y value of our vertex is our minimum. So it's at negative 2 to positive infinity. So close bracket, open bracket. The y-intercept is when we plug 0 into the original problem. When you plug 0 into the original problem. So x is equal to 0. So y is equal to parentheses 0 plus 3 squared minus 2. 0 plus 3 is 3, squared is 9, minus 2 is 7. So our y-intercept is at 0, 7. Now this can also be found in the chart if you have the x value of 0. If the chart does not include the x value of 0, you definitely want to make sure you have the y-intercept. The transformations come from these parts up here. Okay, we want us to determine if our graph is going left or right, up or down, if there's a reflection, and if there's a stretch or compress. So the first thing we look for is left and right. Our h value is negative 3. That determines if it's going left or right. Since it's negative 3, our actual location is going to the left 3. Left 3. We don't say left negative 3 because left is already using the negative. You can't go left and right, that's you're going left and then you go back right, that doesn't make any sense. So you take left or right, then you talk about up or down. So our k value determines that. Since it's negative 2, the negative tells us it's going down, so we say down and then we say 2. Because we don't say down negative 2 because we already have the negative in there. Then we look at our a value to determine if it reflects and if it stretches or compresses. So since a is positive, there is no reflection. It's going to be opened up, which is normal. So we will say there's no reflect. No reflect. Then since a is 1, that's a normal parabola. Therefore, there is, it's not stretching or compressing. So we'd say no stretch slash compress. Stretching is when it makes it go skinnier. And compressing is when it makes it go uh, more flat. So what we want to do is we want to try and graph this without using a calculator. We can check it in our calculator later, but we always want to try and graph it without a calculator first. So as always, we put on our graph our x and y. Now we might need to change our scale to count by twos, but right now we have a scale by one, so we're just going to wait to see what our coordinates are. We always put our vertex in the middle because the vertex is the middle of the graph, which was negative three, negative two. So we already have our x, y, and we have our table down here. So we put our negative 3, negative 2 directly in the middle. Negative 3, negative 2. Then we use the x values. We use the x values to find, um, on like on a number line, the numbers, first two numbers to the right of negative 3, and then the first two numbers to the left of negative 3. So from negative 3 going to the positives is going to be a negative 2 and then a negative 1. Now notice that this does not go to the zero, so it was good that we went ahead and found our y-intercept. 
then from negative 3 going to the left is going to go to negative 4 and then negative 5. And as I said in a previous video, as long as these are the same distance away from the vertex, then the y values will be the same once we find them. So these y values, whenever, when we find them, will be the same, and then these y values will be the same once we find them. So to find them, we plug in or in substitute the x value that we have here for into the original function. And again, you can plug in any x value to get out a y value to graph. So let's, I'm going to focus on the negative 2 and negative 1. So x equals negative 2. I'll plug into my original. y equals parentheses negative 2 plus 3 squared minus 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Squared is still 1. My, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So y equals negative 1. So here I would put negative 1 and I would put negative 1 here as well. And yes, you can use your calculator for this to plug this in and get the value for it. Then I'm going to check the negative 1. So if I say x equals negative 1, I have y equals parentheses negative 1 plus 3 parentheses squared minus 2. Negative 1 plus 3 is really a 2. Then we're going to square the 2, which is 4. And then 4 minus 2 is 2. So I have a 2 here, and I'll have a 2 here. So we have five coordinates here, but I also have the y-intercept of 0, 7, and I can do the mirror of the y-intercept as well. So that will also help us. We're going to go to our plotting of the coordinates. So I have my vertex I'm going to put first is negative 3. So these are all small numbers, so I am going to keep it counting by 1. So at negative 3 and then negative 2 is my vertex. I'm going to go ahead and plot my uh, axis of symmetry going through the vertex. This is my AOS of x equals negative 3. And now I'm going to plot my, all my coordinates. So negative 2, negative 1, I'm going to start going to the right. Then I have negative 1, positive 2. But then I also have my y-intercept of 0, 7. So 0, 7. Now the reason why this is actually pretty pretty interesting is that I don't even have to look at these coordinates down here for the other half because I can just do my symmetrical part. So my symmetry for this coordinate is I would go to the left one, I'll go to the left one more. There's my coordinate, which is at negative 4 and negative 1, same coordinate. Then I can do this coordinate, which is 1, 2 away, I can do 1, 2 away. So this is at negative 5, 2, which is the same coordinate here. I'm going to do the same thing for my y-intercept. This is 1, 2, 3 away. So I'll do 1, 2, 3 away. Now I have the mirror of all of all these coordinates so that I can actually make it more accurate. So now I'm going to graph my parabola. So what happened is, from 0, 0, you can see that the vertex went to the left 3 and then it went down 2. The vertex is going from 0, 0 to a new coordinate. So all of these coordinates actually went from the original of x squared. From If I just plugged in x squared, all of these points actually shifted to the left 3 and then it went down 2. That's what the transformations do. So if we go to number 2, we're going to do this one as well. We're going to find our a values. So there's two parts of the a. a equals, it is a positive. And then a equals, I want the number, which is 2. Then we focus on the h, which again is inside the parentheses since it's squared and then minus 3 on the outside. This is vertex form. So we change the h value, so this becomes a positive 2. Then our k value, we keep the sign, so it's a negative 3. Therefore, we have the vertex is at 2 negative 3, and then our axis of symmetry comes from the x, which is x equals a positive 2. The domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity, and then our range, since it is a positive, it's going to open up. That means it's going to have a positive infinity, and our value, our minimum value, comes from our y, which is negative 3. Close bracket, open bracket. 
Now our y-intercept could come from our chart, but we're going to go ahead and figure that one out. So we're going to have x equals 0. We're going to plug it in. y equals 2 parentheses 0 minus 2 parentheses squared minus 3. So we can plug this into our calculator. We have 2 parentheses 0 minus 2 parentheses squared minus 3, which gives us a positive 5. So our y-intercept is at 0, 5. Y-intercept is at 0, 5. Now, the transformations come from, again, the, these four things up here. So we want to talk about left and right because those are your x values. The h value is a positive 2. That means it's going to go to the right 2. The k value is negative 3. That goes up or down, so it's negative, so it's going to go down. 3. The a value is positive, that means it's not going to reflect, so we're going to put no reflect. But the a value is a 2. That means that it is either going to stretch or compress. Now it stretches if the a value is bigger than 1, and it compresses if it's smaller than 1, because it's going to go down. So this is going to be a vertical stretch. Got to make sure we put vertical stretch, but we have to specify of what? So vertical stretch of, and then whatever our a value is, we put of 2. So now we have our 2, our 3, and then our 2 for our a value. We need to make sure we see all the numbers that are here. If there are numbers bigger than 1, we definitely want to see them for the a. Vertical stretch of 2. It would also be a vertical compress if it was a compression. Now we're going to go and graph this. So we know that our vertex will actually go right 2 and then down 3 then all of our coordinates would technically go right to down 3 from the original of x squared. We we'll go ahead and put our x and y on our axes. And we're going to find our coordinates. So again, I'm going to put my vertex in the direct middle, so 2, negative 3. And then I'm going to fill in my, from their x values, the almost like a number line. To the right of 2 is 3, then 4. And to the left of 2 is 1 and 0. And again, since these are the same distance away from the vertex, these values will be, these y values will be the same, and these y values will be the same. Now, if you notice, we already have an x of 0. We already have our y-intercept. So I can go ahead and put the 5 here without doing any more work for that one. Therefore, I can also put the 5 right here with the 4 comma 5, because they should be the same distance. So now I really only have to find one of these. I can use the 1 or the 3. I'm just going to focus on the 3. So I have x equals 3. You can do the 1. It doesn't really matter. So I have y equals 2 parentheses 3 minus 2 parentheses squared minus 3. And you can use your calculator. I'm going to just going to simplify real quick. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Times 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So I have a negative 1 right here. So negative 1, negative 1. And yes, you can use your calculator. So if you're not sure on how to do this by hand, yes, you can use your calculator. All these coordinates are relatively small, so I'm going to keep it as count by 1. I'm going to go ahead and graph our coordinates. I'm going to graph my 2, negative 3 first because it's my vertex. And again, so from 0, I went right 2 and then down 3. That's what the whole transformation is for. I'm going to go ahead and do my axis of symmetry going through the x equals 2, going through that vertex. So this is AOS x equals a positive 2. And now I'm going to graph these coordinates down here. So I have 3, negative 1, and then 4, 5. And again, I don't even have to look at the other coordinates because I can do the symmetry of it. So this coordinate is 1 away. I need to go 1 more away on the other side. This coordinate is 1, 2 away. I go 1, 2 away. And that's that coordinate of 0, 5. And then this was coordinate of 1, negative 1. So we were right on, right on it. And as long as they're symmetrical, that's what the axis of symmetry will do. Okay, so again, our transformation from 0, 0 from the original x squared went right to and then down 3 because that's where the vertex is located. 
those are talking about the transformations. So please be careful on making sure you know what your two values for A are, then your H and K, because those four things tell you your transformations. Now what we're going to do is write the equation in vertex form, um, just like we did in standard form and intercept form. The coordinate, if you're given the vertex, you want to use vertex form. So write the equation in vertex form for the quadratic functions that were passed through this coordinate. So just like before, we want to know what letters each of these represent. So our vertex will always represent our H and our K. But our point, because it's just a random point, it will represent our X and our Y. Now if we go back to the original format the, the, for, um, for vertex form, it's y equals a parentheses x minus h parentheses squared plus k. This is the original. Now the thing is that we have an h, a k, an x, and a y, but we do not have an a. When it says to write the equation, write the equation, that means that x and y will be letters in our final answer. It doesn't have to start right now. We can have these as numbers, but in our final answer, they'll be letters. So I'm just going to start plugging things in. So my y value that we have is the 0 equals a. Nowhere up here does it say what a is, so I have to put the letter a. Parentheses. It says the x value is negative 6. Then we're going to minus h. That's really minus a negative 2. So remember when we had to change h to bring it out? We're going to change h to put it back in. So right now h is negative 2. So when we put it back in, it will change signs again. So it will be positive 2. Then we have squared. Then we're going to keep the sign for k. So our k is negative 5. So instead of putting plus negative 5, I'm just going to keep the sign for negative 5, so minus 5. Now I'm going to simplify this. 0 equals, this is a parentheses, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 squared minus 5. Now, before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and move this negative 5 to the other side because this negative 5 is not attached to the A. So I'm going to go ahead and move that. So plus 5 to both sides. Now I'm going to simplify. So I have 0 plus 5 is 5 equals A times. Now we have negative 4 squared, which is a positive 16. So really we have 5 equals 16A. There is a big, uh, you really need to make sure that you move this 5 to the other side because this is subtracted and this is multiplied. You can't actually put the 16 and the 5 together to make it an 11. Okay? So now we need to solve for A by dividing by the 16 because that's what's attached to the A. So A will equal to 5 over 16, so 5 sixteenths. Now that we have our a, we can actually write our final equation. So we're going to go back to our original, and remember, writing the equation means x and y will be letters. y is a letter. Equals a, we just found out, was 5 over 16. Parentheses, x is a letter. Minus h. And again, since we, when we bring out the h, we change the sign. So when we put the h in, we change the sign. So it was a negative 2. When we put it in, it will be a plus 2 parentheses, squared, and again with vertex we always keep the sign for k, so our k was negative 5, so we're just going to put minus 5, and this is our vertex form. And you can graph this and see if it goes through the vertex of negative 2, negative 5, and through the point negative 6, 0. On part b we're going to do the same thing, so our vertex is our h and k, and our point is our x and y. So we're going to write the equation so x and y will be letters in the end but not at the beginning. So using our original function still from up here, our y value is 5 equals, we don't have a so we put a parentheses. Our x value is 2 and then again the h we're going to change the sign to put it back in so it's going to be minus 1 squared but we're going to keep the k value, which is a positive 3, so we're going to put plus 3. Now you can actually go ahead and move the 3 to the other side like we did the 5. You can go ahead and do that now if you prefer. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So right now it's plus 3, so I know I have to subtract 3. So 5 minus 3 is going to be 2 equals a parentheses. I can go ahead and simplify this. 2 minus 1 is 1 squared, 
and then that will go to zero. So we really have two equals a times one squared is one. So we really have two equals one a. What that means since the one is already there, that means a is in fact equal to, we can just divide by one if you need to, a is equal to two. So now that we have the a and we have all of our letters, we can go to our answer. Remember, writing the equation means x and y will be letters. So y is going to be a letter. Equals a, we just found it was 2. Parentheses, x is going to be a letter. Minus h. So the h, again, it was 1, but when we pull it out, we change the sign. So when we put it back in, we change the sign. So it's going to be 1 instead. It's going to be a minus 1. Parentheses squared, and then plus k. We're going to keep the sign for k, so 3. We're going to keep it at a positive 3. And this is our function. And again, you can graph this and see if it goes through the vertex. We can see it's 1, change the sign, change h, keep k. And then we can also see if it goes through the coordinate 2, 5. This problem right here, we're actually going to convert it. I'm going to show you how to convert from vertex form into standard form. because This one is a little more tricky. So to convert it into standard form, we do have to distribute, we have to get all the parentheses away. What you focus on first are the parentheses, because standard form has no parentheses. This part right here, it says squared. That means it's actually written twice. So we truly rewrite it as negative 2 parentheses x plus 1 parentheses x plus 1 and then minus 10. So if you follow along with this, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute we're going to distribute the parentheses. Not the negative 2 yet. We're going to keep that negative 2. We're going to have go from two sets of parentheses down to 1. So we're going to have distribute the x become x squared. x times 1 is plus 1x. We're going to do the 1 times x is 1x. And then 1 times 1 is positive 1. So all of this, everything else stayed the same. I'm just going to simplify this real quick. This is negative 2 parentheses. It'll become x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then minus 10. Next, we are going to, we still got to get rid of the parentheses. So we actually have to distribute the negative 2 to everything. But that negative 10 is not part of the parentheses, so that's going to stay at the end. I'm going to keep that in purple. So I take my negative 2 and distribute it to everything inside the parentheses. So I'll now have negative 2x squared, then minus 4x, and then minus 2. But that negative 10 is actually still in purple because I never did anything with it yet. But now I have no parentheses left. All I have to do now is just, con just simplify everything. I have no other x squared, I have no other x, but I do have two constants, so I need to put those together. So I will rewrite this as y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x, and then negative 2 and negative 10 together is negative 12. And this is our final answer. This is converted into standard form. There are no parentheses. On this last one, we're going to, the equation of a parabola is y equals x squared plus bx plus c with a vertex of 2, 5. We're going to find the b and c. What that means is we want to put it into vertex form and then convert it. So we have the vertex form. Again, is y equals a parentheses x minus h parentheses squared plus k. So our vertex is our h and our k, h and k. Now, from the original one, do you notice that it does not say a x squared? That actually means that we have the value of a. We have, we have the value of a, which is a positive 1. That's actually a positive 1. That means that we don't have to do what we did over here to find a. We already have it. So we can go ahead and start writing this as y equals, we have one parentheses, x, and then our h value is, is a 2, so we have to change it. It will become a minus 2, parentheses squared, 
and then we want to put plus k, which is, a, keep the k, we're going to put plus 5. Now we just actually convert it into standard form, now that we have our a value. So again, we have our x minus 2 squared, this part right here, is really supposed to be written twice. So this is 1, parentheses, x minus 2, x minus 2, and then plus 5. So we're going to distribute the parentheses to get it from two sets of parentheses down to one. So we're going to keep that one out in front, parentheses. And we're going to, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. We're going to close the parentheses, and we still have that plus 5 at the end. This will again become 1 parentheses. We're going to just simplify this part. The negative 2x, negative 2x. x squared. This becomes a negative 4x plus 4. Parentheses plus 5. The next part is distributing that 1, which if we distribute the 1, it won't change anything. So I'm just going to show that distri distribution, though, with the because of the parentheses. So now we're going to have just an x squared minus 4x plus 4 gets rid of the parentheses, but we still have that plus 5 in purple because that has not changed yet. So now what we need to do is combine our constants. So we're going to end up with a y equals, we have an x squared, a negative 4x, but then a 4 and 5 together gives us a positive 9. We still have the a value of 1. You see, from this format to this format, the a is still the same. So no matter what form you're dealing with, the a value will still be the same in all three forms. That's our final answer. So then b is actually going to be negative 4, and then c is equal to 9, because that was the question. What Find b and c. This is actually what we were looking for. We had to put it in standard form to find the b and c.